Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the one hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Before I get to the chart here, I want to mention that I did uh, remove the forums. There was a forum on the Silver for the People blog, and there was a forum on the member site. Unfortunately, because of some DDoS attacks and just the nature of having a forum, I've had to remove them. Um, also, we have a lot of backlink complaint requests, and that's because uh, people posting things create backlinks, and then what happens is the website owner gets upset for whatever reason. They put in a backlink removal request, and we have to deal with all sorts of issues, and we're just not a big enough operation because it's just Jennifer and myself and some employees posting on the public blog. But other than that, it's just a small operation. We just don't have time to deal with that. So unfortunately, um, there's the member chat or there's the discuss system on the public blog, which is kind of self-moderating, self-regulating. I apologize to everybody who was active, but it was just not something that we could maintain and it just created too much work. So. Again, if there's an issue with that, or if you have any issues logging in, or I've had to put in some firewall restrictions as well. Um, because of the DDoS attacks, we had to put in some firewall restrictions about repeated logins. We had one IP address, for example, did uh, 21,000 attempted logins in a 24-hour period. So that was spiking the... CPU utilization our cloud uh, hosting and costing us hundreds and hundreds of dollars so we had to shut that down so if any of you do get locked out for whatever reason I think the only protection is uh, automatic lockout if you fail to have your password right five times just remember that you know on the fourth time send something to brother John F at yahoo.com or send something in the chat if you can get into it Again, I apologize for those things. It's something that we had to do. Now, this is the one hour chart, as I said before, and there's a couple of things I wanted to point out here. Uh, we're gonna see, a, we're gonna talk about the volume when we look at the bill holder article, but you know, I point out before how, how much this, this volume is rising. The other thing I've drawn in here is pretty important is this trend line on the MACD and you can see it's right at the rollover point. So we had that huge volume come in on the sell-off and, and it appears that silver, silver is rolling over. Now will we get that test to 15? We may. I believe that if we get a test, I think you can see from past activity in the silver market, we know that silver is violent to the downside and you can see some here you can see a massive one there that was September 2011 and you can also see one here uh, there's some action there so I'm looking for one of these kind of crazy spike low scenarios you can see that this spike low touched a price of $26 that was the big test but you can also see that other than that day, and you can see we're on the daily, so let's zoom in there. You can see that other than on this day, the lowest price the silver ever really traded was about 29 bucks, except for the day that it traded on 26 bucks. Now, if you're doing what I do and you shop at Atmex or Gainesville or one of the sites that actually adjusts things to the silver price you can do some neat stuff like buy with a credit card because you're gonna pay basically 80 90 cents more but if your timing's right you're saving three bucks so you can lock it in real fast you can get it shipped right away if you play those spike lows I'm thinking we're gonna get one of those and I think that it may be on incredible volume and looks something like this. I may be wrong, I may be right. So let's go over and look at some of the latest silver stuff. The first thing I wanted to take you over to is a new site. I found it on Silver Doctors 
and this is the Wealth Watchman. Now, I don't know who this person is. I looked up the domain. It's registered in Australia. It gives the name of a person, but I don't think that's the person with the site. But this is another person coming on, telling the silver story. Almost everything in here is something that I've covered at some point or another in my nearly 600 videos, I think. But it's a very well done presentation. It's uh, very professional. And so I highly recommend it. I encourage you to give him your support because we need as many voices in this thing as we can get. So let's review this uh, Silver News is Tightening. I encourage you to read all five of these. And you can see that his his output is pretty high. The number one came out September 3rd, and we're already up to number five, which came out September 12th. So in, in the course of nine days, he's put out five of these. But let's look at number three, uh, a reason why the silver noose is tightening. And this is really a good presentation of the mining story. I've given this a number of times, but let's read a little bit of this. Imagine being invited to an early morning business presentation where a sizable company promised to show you their plans. Let's jump to it. Good morning, investors. Just so you know, for a full disclosure, I'm going to offer you an exciting, rare opportunity to sink your hard-earned cash into a business that won't be turning a reasonable profit anytime soon. I'm sorry, what did you say? Asked the stunned older fellow next to you, putting down his iPhone. Yes, I said there will be no reasonable profit margins anytime soon. Not to worry, though, because even though we spent the last several years with declining profits, as of this day, I'm proudly able to announce that we're currently producing our sole product at a loss. Wait a minute, says a woman at the other end of the table. You mean to tell me that your company only offers one product and that you're knowingly going to continue producing at a loss? Oh, I can see we've got some sharp minds in this room. The company rep responds, yes, that's correct. We'll continue working hard to ensure that we bring as much of this precious product on the market as we possibly can for a loss. But how do you intend to turn this trend around? What's your game plan, she continued. That's an excellent question, ma'am. Excellent question. What we intend to do is burn through all our best resources now in hopes that the losses we're incurring won't be large enough to sink us immediately. So you're going to attempt to lessen your margins of loss by cranking up the volume on the product that you're producing? Why? Why not cease production, cut your losses, and wait for better times? Ah, uh, yes. Well, ma'am, one reason is that our biggest creditors, who are banks, have ensured us a guaranteed line of credit to continue our operations. We fear that we might just reconsider that they might just reconsider that line of credit, even call in the loan were we to stoop to such an extreme unjustifiable measure. That still doesn't answer my question. Why would you bother fighting and struggling at all for losses? If you've had losses and will continue to have losses in the foreseeable future, why are you doing this at all? Why would banks continue to fund your operations? I'm disappointed in you, ma'am. You're not seeing the big picture here. As we continue to produce more of our product at a loss, then those losses continue to mount to greater heights and our indebtedness to those banks will reach dizzying levels. With any luck, we can eventually go into the coveted status of receivership and be picked up by those banks who currently fund us for pennies on the dollar. Receivership, you finally ask, having heard enough, you mean bankruptcy, right? Beaming at your words with a tear in his eye, the company representative approaches you and says, you get it, son, you get it. How would you like to come work for our company? Who would do such a thing? Sounds like the dumbest business plan you've ever had. Yes, it is dumb. Even a child knows better than to get excited about an investment prospect from a management team who do that to their investors. Who in their right mind would ever run a company this way, right? The sad fact remains that plenty of companies think this is a viable business model for this is a simplified version of exactly how gold and silver mining companies operate and how they treat their shareholders. And it goes on. So encourage you to read the rest of that one. Great expose. I really like the way he presented that. Um, that's something I've been talking about for the longest time. It's absolutely insane the way uh, these mining companies are controlled and the way that they just keep losing money. 
And I'm going to try to find the one about the solar because that one is absolutely fantastic. And I think it maybe it's number two. Anyway, this is not a story that I covered that much because the story on solar is crazy. It is an industry that is just exploding, as we'll see here when we look at the information that he shows. And that's not it. So it's probably going to be the last one that I pick here. But uh, China is ramping up its solar production to unbelievable levels. Well, I apologize. I'm not finding it. And we may just have to skip that. But uh, the production of solar power in China is exploding. Here it is here. So this is a chart of the increase in solar power production. And you can see that there. It's going crazy. And we know that silver is, among other things, the most reflective. So you can see these pictures here. Let's read a little bit of this. What you're looking at represents the amount of energy that is being generated by the photovoltaic solar panels which have been installed around the globe. Just look at 2013's bar. Planet Earth has literally installed enough silver line solar panels to generate over 139,000 megawatts of electricity or 139 gigawatts. That's up from a mere 1.2 gigawatts in the year 2000. Silver is truly the indispensable metal, and without it, there would be no solar industry to speak of. To call the growth of silver's use for this industry brisk would be the understatement of the year. Silver's growth in solar panel fabrication is nothing short of parabolic. And he goes on. I don't have time to go into all of it. This is an interesting chart that shows you the price history of silicon PVC cells in dollars per watt. So you can see that it's continuously falling. S solar power is becoming more and more affordable. China has plans to increase their solar to levels that you can't even believe. Please read this article and uh, understand how serious this solar situation is and what that, how that is going to impact silver. So let's go over to the latest Bill Holter and this is very good because we're going to get into the increase in the volume and especially the key here is going to be the increase in the open interest. Now I've talked about this many times before. When you're talking about a futures contract, when you're talking about stock options, uh, you're talking about a one for one situation. So anytime someone takes the long or short side of a option or a futures contract. That means that there has to be an equal and opposite position on the other side. So if I decide that I want to buy 10 contracts long silver, I either have to buy them from someone who's willing to sell them, who owns them, or if they need to be originated. That means someone needs to take the other side. If I'm long 10, someone else is short 10. So that's important for you to understand because that's what causes people to keep an eye on the open interest. If open interest is increasing, that means new contracts are being created and that can mean a large number of things. But let's read Bill's analysis of this. I wrote an article titled Kill Switch a couple of weeks back where I hypothesized the Chinese are the ones behind the very high and very curious open interest in Comex Silver. I want to revisit this. I want to revisit this because of the action this past week and this past Thursday in particular. Silver dropped almost 50 cents on Thursday and broke through the $19 level to the downside. 
Please remember that silver has a global all-in cost of production somewhere near $25 per ounce. So these prices will only augur more for more, much less supply. Supply in this case is real supply of raw silver to be used for electronics, solar panels, jewelry, investment, etc. Common sense tells you if you must sell your product for a loss, you will either sell less of it, not sell any of it, or sell all that you can for all that you can for cash flow and go bankrupt. Supply will dry up. I mentioned supply in the above paragraph to give you some perspective of what was wrong with the action in silver on Thursday. As a reminder, the open interest in gold and silver could not be more opposite. Gold has a very low open interest, while silver has now virtually record open interest and at levels last seen three years ago when it was trading at nearly $50. Silver has now dropped in price by more than 60%, yet the amount of contracts outstanding is as high or higher. As a refresher of the laws of supply and demand, price should rise when there is either more demand or less supply. Price should drop whenever there is less demand or more supply. This is simple, right? The answer is yes, simple, but let me explain what has been and is happening. The total open interest in silver rose on Thursday, a whopping 6,268 contracts. This represents more than 31 million ounces of silver in one day. Does this silver even exist? I'm not going to say no way, not even a chance. Let me explain, or I'm sorry, I'm going to say no way, not even a chance. Let me explain why in a minute. The total inventory of silver registered and available to deliver is roughly 60 million ounces. Do you see the problem here? The price of silver dropped over 2.5% because there were more sellers than there were buyers, but the sellers were selling paper contracts, not real touchable and usable silver. Explaining a little further, if there was a panic to sell real silver, the longs would sell to close their position and open interest would decline. So that's the key. When someone has an existing future contract, that means that they are outstanding. They have to either deliver silver if they're short, or if they're long, they have to put up the money to buy the silver. If, if the longs believed that there was going to be a collapse in the price of silver, then they're going to liquidate their position. They're not going to initiate new positions. So what we're seeing here and what he's explaining is that we're seeing an open interest increase, which means that there are sellers coming in who are initiating new positions, which causes open interest to rise. Now, if these sellers are initiating new positions, it's most likely that these are paper sellers, and that's why according to Bill, and I think he's right, that we're seeing open interest rise. That's why you see what I point out here in the volume chart, you see this massive increase in volume that is directly connected to the amount of open interest. The larger the number of open interest or the larger the number of contracts created which is measured by open interest, the larger the amount of volume. That's what we're seeing. This clearly did not happen as the open interest rose. The sellers sold to open positions 31 million ounces worth of positions. For a little more perspective, the total open interest in silver is now over 172,000 contracts. This represents over 860 million ounces the December contract alone is nearly 140,000 contracts or 700,000 ounces. And remember, there are only 60 million ounces currently registered and available. I'm sorry, 700 million ounces. There's only 60 million ounces currently registered and available for delivery. So actually, this number is around what's mined. So that's one month delivery. First notice day is now only 75 days away. That's the first notice day of 
December, which means that you have to give notice as to whether you're going to take delivery or not. And there are more than 10 paper ounces sold for every one real ounce supposedly available to deliver. What if these contract owners actually do ask for delivery? So he goes into some of the stuff and talks about Harvey Organ, talks about China and his belief that China may be behind this. We know someone is behind this and it makes sense that at some point China's interests and the Federal Reserve interests would converge if China is interested in accumulating large amounts of precious metals and the Federal Reserve is interested in suppressing the price of precious metals to support the dollar or to keep interest rates low or to be able to run huge deficits for the Congress, then it makes sense that those two would converge in both of them agreeing to suppress the price of precious metals. But China's interest is going to be accumulating precious metals at these very low prices. The Federal Reserve's interest is just going to be to kick the can down the road another day. So as that silver and gold drain over to the east, then eventually we're going to have to find that the LBMA and the COMEX aren't going to be able to deliver the physical silver that is demanded, and that's going to be game over. Now, I believe game over is going to occur actually very abruptly. I think the Western governments have made it clear, and I've said this many, many times, they intend to run this train off the tracks. Now, it doesn't make any sense if you already know ahead of time you are going to run the train off the tracks, that this can't be slowed, it can't be turned around. It doesn't make a lot of sense to start applying the brakes a short time before the thing runs off the tracks. You just simply run it off the tracks at full speed. That's what I think they're going to do. That's why I think we're going to go down to the very last deliverable ounce until we have the crisis. And then I think Harvey Organ may be correct. You could literally wake up and overnight you could see a tenfold move in the price of silver. And we'll talk to you next time.